Welcome. So thank you. <laughs> so uh, hi everybody. Um, we are looking at um, at Google uh, Meet in Classroom. So this is a classroom. This is a function that was just enabled the other day. This is a function that we had to make some changes on our back end for, and are causing a whole bunch of different issues with regards to that. So I will try and address those. I want to kind of showcase how it works and what it does. And then I'll talk about why we had to make some of the changes while we're going through and doing this. It is fairly straightforward. I'm gonna share my screen with you now. And so if I'm looking off to the side, that's just because I'm looking at my stream here. Okay, perfect. And we're gonna jump into a classroom that I know I do not have, uh, have it turned on for. So essentially what Google has done is they have made the ability to create a meet inside of classroom where unless the link is shared outside, it is only available to the students and the teacher inside classroom. Before the meet is started, the meet is owned by the classroom. So that means that right now, the meet is owned by nobody and we haven't turned it on. That was one of the reasons we had to make some of the setting cha settings changes we did because the meet is owned by the classroom. The first person to show up is the owner of the meet and they're the organizer. So what we were having is in some classes, uh, students were getting there like a half an hour beforehand before the teacher was there. And because they started the meet in classroom, they were the owner or the organizer, which means any they had the ability to mute and unmute anybody in the class, including the actual teacher. And they had the ability to remove anybody in the class, including the actual teacher. So we had to remove that ability. Well, and one more thing, any of the recordings that were done by the teacher or a student or anybody like that ended up in the organizer's drive. So that means if the student got there first and they recorded it, it went into their drive and the teacher wouldn't have had access to that recording if it was being recorded. And so we had to change that and stop our students from being able to start any meets in order to prevent them from getting there early. So essentially that's what we did. That was one of the changes that we made. But let me show you how to set this up. So in order to set up a meet into your Google Classroom and up in the top right hand corner, you're just gonna click on the little settings icon. I recommend you come doing this anyway, but because uh, there's some of the settings under the general section here that you would wanna take a look at. Under meet, there's if you haven't already activated it, it says generate meet link. Once you do that once, it's good to go and you're, and you're A-OK. -okay. So we're just gonna generate that meet link and it will give us a, just a random, you know, what is that, 10 characters at the end, but essentially just a Google Meet link. By default, that Meet link is visible to students. All right, if you don't want it to be visible to students, if you want to only post it to them or send it to them or something like that, you can turn that off. And I'll show you the difference between the two settings on what that looks like. For right now, I'm gonna leave that on. Step number one in troubleshooting for me with regards to meeting classroom, if I'm ever having difficulties and something I don't think is going right or I'm having trouble connecting, I jump into here, into that dropdown, and I reset that link. So resetting the link is just gonna do a quick, you know, flush on Google's end. It's gonna eliminate that old meet, it's gonna get rid of it, and it's gonna create a new one, okay? And so we have a new 10 digit, I think it's 10. No, 11, 11 digit, uh, oh no, now I'm counting wrong, 10 digit um, code there for that. So, all right, so what does that look like? It is, it is ridiculously simple. It is so, so easy here. For your students and for you on the main page of the classroom, there will be a meet link right below the class code link if you still have that available. All your kids need to do is come and click on that and they are into the Google Meet. You don't need to invite them, you don't need to, schedule it with a calendar. You don't need to do anything. You just need to have that available. That link is also available in the classwork page. So if you go to the classwork page right up top beside the drive folder calendar, there'll now be a little mink link, sorry, meet link up there that's gonna take you to the exact same place. If 
we didn't have that visible to students. I think it's going to take that away from me as well, hopefully. That link is gone up here. You no longer see the meet link under the classwork page. And if I go to my main page to the stream, you no longer see that meet link there. So why would you want to do this? Well, I mean, I'm hearing some teachers that are saying they create an assignment and that assignment is posted at a certain time. So they have, you know, scheduled the assignment to come on at nine o'clock. And that assignment is, you know, join the classroom lecture or whatever they're calling it, right? And then you can go back to your, so you can go back inside of here. Instead of making it visible to students, you can just copy that link. And then when we go back to our classwork page to make our assignment, I'm kind of rushing through there. So, you know, today's meet, and we can just add the link and post it right into there. And now it's only gonna go active. It's only gonna go out to the students when this goes out, right? When this gets posted. So I would then go in my assignment and uh, just schedule that for later. So up here and schedule it for maybe tomorrow at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock or whenever I wanted to, so. But essentially that is the that is the nickel tour. That is the shortest little explanation on how to do this. So what do you need to do? If you're gonna use Meet in Classroom, you need to go back to all of your scheduled meets if you were scheduling them with a calendar and you want to, you know, just delete them all, get rid of them all. You want to go to any links that you've maybe shared out with students. Maybe you've posted a link on a website or something like that, and you want to just remove that link. You want to get rid of it so that this is the only way that kids are coming into your Google Meets. All right. Now, this is where life gets a little bit fun here. Let me stop here. I'm going to stop really quickly. Is there any questions with regards to meet in classroom right now. Feel free to throw it in the chat. Feel free to unmute your mic and jump in if you want. So, so Jason, if we do it that way and the students beat us into the classroom, does that mean that we've lost our control as the teacher? <laughs> Actually, no, Allison. So I'm gonna show you right now what, what's gonna happen from the student end if they try and jump in there too soon. Um, because it'll actually show up as this meet is not available. This link does not work. So they can't go in until you go in. So, and so I will show you. Have, can you have two people in there with the power and control of a teacher? Yes. So, uh, well, no, the first person in there is the only person with, with the control for the teacher. So that, uh, yeah, that one we can't change. We can't have two people in there. But the first person in there has that ability. But any of our adults, any of our EAs, teachers, admins, admin assistants, anything like that, anybody with essentially an at Palliser SD email address as opposed to a PRS26 email address have the ability to start that classroom or that meet. So they can be the first ones in there. But you can't have two people with that right. So. Okay, so if you had two Palliser SDs in there, they could throw kids out if you needed to? They would have that power, or is it only the organizer? Only the organizer would be able okay. to do that. Only the first person in there, so. Okay. I'm just logging in here with a fictitious account. So I can show you what this looks like. Is there a way to automatically record the meets or do we have to press record every time? You have to press record every time, Kata. Yes. You bet. All right, so we're gonna jump back. So this is a student that's logged in um, into one of these classrooms. If we jump into any of these, we can see what their meet looks like. They have the meet link up there. We see it in the classroom. They have that right there. And if we click on it, this is what happens. So for our students, if they try and get there first, 
it tells them we've encountered a problem joining this, can't do it. They can try and reload as much as they want, but they are unable to initiate that meet. So this is for our demo class. We're gonna jump over to, I think it's this one. And as a teacher, I am now gonna go in and start the link. So I believe, and hopefully this works out for me, let me mute this. The minute that you get to this screen right here, this screen right here starts to meet. So now if I go back to my student, um, which is right here, and I try and jump into the meet, they are able to get in. So even though I had not clicked, oh, maybe not. I could totally be wrong here. So I should be there. And I believe that if I click this, it was supposed to let me in. But it's telling me I can't. Okay, so that was different from the, the original time I looked at this. So I have to join then. And now as a student, I'm able to join. Okay, so that's that's slightly different from, from when I had originally looked at this. When I originally looked the minute you were on that join screen, that's when it activated the meet. But what we're seeing here is that we actually have to get into the meet uh, and join straight in. So we can't just be hanging out there waiting for our class to get in there. Can you duplicate the meet code to another Google Classroom so that if you have two blocks of the same subject, they could go? Yeah, so it's it's still, uh, I originally was under the assumption that it was only for students in, the, in that classroom registered in there. But if you take that meet code and you share it out, uh, anybody will be able to, I, sorry, I say anybody. Other students within Palliser will be able to do that. So yes, you could duplicate it in another classroom. It does not allow you to edit, excuse me, edit the code. But what you could do is you could post, you could make it not visible to students. And then you could post that into the classroom as a material and just pin it to the top, right? Just make it so that your video meet, meets us at the top. Right on. All right. Um, the last thing that kind of goes along with this is leaving the classroom or sorry leaving the meet as a teacher if you leave before your students are done if you are not the last person in there they can stay in there so if you start a session and then you're doing your work and you say bye and you want to get out of there quick and you leave they can stay in there and if you haven't stopped the recording, the recording will continue for whatever's going on. So all that you wanna make sure that you do is that you are the very last person to, to leave that meet. Um, if I was doing that in this session here, and I won't kick on anybody out, don't worry about this. But if I was doing that from inside of here, all you wanna do is open up the people tab because I'm the organizer, I can click on any of these and click the remove button. So if you have any students that are just kind of hanging around, maybe their mic's muted, and this happens all the time, right? They step out of the, they step away, they, they go to do something else, they mute their mic, they turn their camera off. You can remove them from here so that you're the last person that leave. It takes about 30 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds is what Google's saying, but 30 to 60 seconds for that meet to completely shut down. So just so you're aware, it might still be open for a bit. I don't think that we're gonna get kids jumping back in, but uh, essentially it still is active for a little bit that kids could join back into there, so. All right, I'll stop again really quick here. Is there any other questions with regards to what we just went through? So, Jason, is there any room in Google settings um, at, a, at a global level that we can have two teachers having the, the shared responsibility? What we're finding is 
um, if we want to do any joint teaching that what they don't have they don't have the same powers and uh, that that's the one thing that's making me hesitate about uh, shifting mm -hmm. right over to the uh, the way that I have that power in blackboard yeah so so based on and and Steve and I were actually just going through a blackboard session this morning we were looking at it and stuff like that based on that you have the and for those of you who aren't familiar with blackboard do you have the ability to almost transfer those powers to more people. You can have the original teacher, you can have a guest teacher, and then you have the students. So you have different roles in there. Uh, we have not seen anything come available for that yet. So there's been no differentiation made on, on their side for multiple teachers or guest teachers or co-teachers or the ability to transfer that power from one teacher to another. Um, we're still just seeing that there's only one person uh, that's available to do that, so. Okay, thanks. Yeah, 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 so. Um, yeah, so is one other thing here really quickly, uh, just based on the changes that we had to make to uh, stop students from creating uh, a meet and starting, uh, initiating the meet. By doing that, by turning that off, essentially what we did is uh, we stopped students from participating in Google Hangout video calls. So those of you who are using, and I've, I've you know, I've uh, fielded a lot of questions about this today, and I try and try to include something in the through from the tech team today. But those of you who have used uh, the video calls, which was kind of simple, it was down in the bottom corner. You could turn it on in your in your Gmail. Uh, it was very very easy. Um, students can no longer participate in those video calls. Uh, there's it doesn't even allow you to invite a student into them and have them participate. So all video calls with students essentially need to be done through Google Meet now. So you'll, as the adult or an EA, will have to initiate that and then invite the student to it or share that link with them. So it's unfortunate that that broke. Um, Google has said, and, and I was just looking at something uh, yesterday, the day before, that it's coming uh, shortly the uh, integration of Meet into Gmail. So you'll get just like you see a link right now for, for chat and everything, if you have it turned on in Gmail, uh, you'll see that same link for Google Meet. So it's gonna make that process a little bit simpler for those of you who are, are working in email all day. Uh, and they're also going to integrate uh, a grid view type method. You see it now, I haven't seen mine. So that's awesome if you're seeing it, that must be it's on its way. That's so good. So. Maybe I'm just I, not paying attention. I have right side chat enabled and, and it's now. Uh, uh oh, Allison left. She just got cut off. So right side chats enabled. So we'll have to, I'll have to take a look at that and, and see what's going on um, with regards to that. But that's awesome that it, it showed up this morning. So the other thing that we are expecting to see from Google with regards to meet is a, an integrated grid view. Um, we had GridView set up, uh, sorry, GridView is an extension that we kind of recommended for teachers who wanted to see more kids on there. Um, and I know a lot of people were using it. And then the last week it went down. Um, and it, uh, was it last week or the week before? And it, it essentially just broke uh, after an update came down. Um, it came back, everything's good, but it's a third party extension. Google is gonna integrate a, a GridView of up to 16 users in there and that one we should see rolling out shortly as well. I think they're fast tracking that one. So we should see that one uh, rolling out quickly as well. So, so this is a quick one, not a lot of content in here, but hopefully this helped uh, explain to you what you were seeing inside of uh, Meet and Meet in Classroom. And uh, I'll stick around now and I will answer any questions if you have them. I'm sure I missed something. I guarantee you I missed to say something. So please, if you have a question, let me know if you want me to rewind on something and go short, uh, slower. Let me know that as well. So, And if you decide that your time with me is done, I am okay with that. And, and thank you for spending some time with me. And I'm sure we'll see you again. So. Philip, if you haven't left yet, I'll reach out to you afterwards and, and we can look at, uh, we'll look at your question, so.
You're welcome, Sarah. Oh, thanks, Saxon. <laughs>